this morning. Good morning. Thank you, Jesus, for another day, man. Please stand this morning as we celebrate the Lord this morning and worship Him and praise and worship. Amen. God is good. Amen. All the time. God is good. Thank you, Lord, for the, we're celebrating five years today of what God has established living way. Amen. God is good. He's doing great and mighty things in our land and in this church, in this city, in our world. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. I love his word. It says in 1 Chronicles 16, 8, it says, Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Amen. Let the whole world know what he has done. He, our amazing, wonderful Savior, God and Lord and King of Kings and Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together this morning and just worship him with your whole heart your whole heart in spirit and in truth there's no one like our god amen amen hallelujah lord let's just take a moment to just worship him thank you father for being with us this morning thank you father for your grace and your mercy that endures forever thank you father for all the things that you're doing in our lives today lord thank you father god for your kindness and your mercy, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Your mercy and your love, your love is unfailing. 
mercy and your love, your love is unfailing. Lord, I am grateful. I give thanks for all you have done. I won't forget all the battles you have won. Your love is unfailing. Lord, I am
Father, that you sent your only begotten Son to give us eternal life, Father God, when we put our trust in you, Lord Jesus. There's no one like you, Father.
this morning. For our King is soon returning. As we hold to this assurance, Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Let's sing that verse again. Let our hearts. Let our hearts continue burning. For our King is soon returning. As we hold to this assurance, Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Pour it out. Let your love run. things that you do not see yet the word says that we walk not by sight not by what we see or what we feel or what we understand but we walk by faith you know um and as we've been just this month as we've been just a, a, receiving god's word through pastor conrad you know sometimes situations may not seem most favorable towards us Sometimes it might seem like it's still a long time away before we can receive our promise, before we can see that word that God spoke over us, over our families, over our home, over even over our finances, before we can see it even come to pass. But even then, God is still faithful. And I love this. It says, prophesy like it is done. Prophesy like it is done. Like your blessing is awaiting you right there. You may not see it right now. Oh, but the blessing is there. Speak over it and continue to speak over it. Continue to say, no, Lord, you spoke to me. You told me my family was going to serve you. You told me that you were going to restore my finances or that you were going to provide for every single one of my needs that you were going to bring healing to me that you were going to bring deliverance to my family that you were going to that you're going to do these things you spoke them to me i'm going to stick to them and i'm going to run with them i'm going to go with them oh i don't see it now even though i do not see it yet lord i'm trusting you Amen. i'm trusting you and that blessing, it's there. So I'm going to declare it as it is. My children belong to you, Lord. My household belongs to you. My finances belong to you. My health belongs to you, Lord. You've spoken to me. You said you don't want me sick. You did not design me to be sick. So I do not receive this. My body is healthy. My body is strong. My body has been restored to its original design. And someone needs to hear that today. Your body is being restored right now. Amen. Your healing is come is, is here now. Yes. Receive it. Receive it. Those, those finances that you've been needing, they're happening right now. Because the Lord is in this place. And where the Lord is, there is no lack. Where the Lord is, 
There is fullness, not just fullness of joy, fullness of strength, fullness of every single thing because there is no lack in the kingdom. There is no lack in this kingdom. So let's prophesy that blessing. Let's speak that blessing out. Let's declare that blessing now. Now is the time to do that.
you, Father, for your promises. For your promise are yea and amen, Father. Whatever you say, Lord, goes. For you are mighty, Lord God. And your plans can never be shaken, Father. And you make all things new, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the new level, for the new grace, for the new doors that are being opened to us, Father God. We give you honor and praise and glory, Father God, to your name. Street. 
praise what the Lord is doing. My reality, it's my reality. There's an overflow. Hallelujah. Is anybody favored here in the house of God? Is the favor of God upon you this morning? When you woke up this morning, the favor of God was already on you when you breathed your breath of life that He has given you. God's blessing is outpouring His blessings upon us this morning. Each one of us, it is there for our receiving. We sang that song earlier. He's pouring out his rain. I remember five years ago when we started out here, when we were being installed as pastors, it was pouring out there. The physical rain was pouring. And those that were here, you guys remember, it was ankle high in the parking lot, water. But you know what the Lord was saying in that season and that time and what he continues to say with us? He says, the physical rain, yes, 
and he spoke to us and said the drought was over and he began to pour out a spirit of fresh anointing here on Living Way and the congregation and on people and lives have been touched because he called us to be a house of prayer, he called us to be a house of restoration and he began to do that in the process and there are many, many, many of you that have testimonies of that to that effect. Amen. Look what Daniel says. Daniel chapter 1 verse 9 and I'm going to read this from the Amplified Version. Everybody say now. Now. Now, now. now God granted, granted Daniel favor. <laughs> Do you know the story behind that? Do you really know the story? Because Daniel and his friends were captive. They were taken captives. They were not, they didn't, they were not supposed to be in that hometown in Babylon. Their hometown was Israel and they were taken and they were brought to a place not of their own wanting to be there. But in the midst of all of that, all of the struggles, all of the stuff that you know, we've been talking about this in the book of Daniel this last couple of Sundays here at this church. And we talked about his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? Even their names were changed. Can you believe that? Their names got changed. But they were there. They still continued to trust God. In the midst of asking them to do the things that were totally contradicting to their beliefs and what they, was, what they wanted what they were doing with the, with the king worshipped the statue that he graven an image that he created. And if you would bow down and worship and all of this stuff. And, but they said, no, we won't. The first Sunday when I spoke, I said, what was the title of my message was, but even if our oh God doesn't save us, we will not bow down to your gods. Amen. I truly believe there's a season in time for us Christians and believers and for us to rise up. There's an awakening taking place. There's no longer of this complacency where we just sit down because God wants to pour out His favor. Yes. But only those who will stand in the face of the enemy, having done all, stand. You know, football season is on right now, right? Oh, your pastor, you're not going to talk about football. So, no, I'm not going to because, you know, I haven't even watched the whole season, right? <laughs> but those linemen, you may be seated. Those linemen, what do they do when they stand on the line, right? What do they do? They, they anchor themselves down with their cleats and stuff because they don't want to be pushed. Because if you're just going to stand there as they come, come to you, you're going to just get mowed down. But God is saying to you tonight, today, this morning, that if you would just stand in the face of the enemy as what he has called you to be as believers, as the favor of God and the blessing that is upon you, then there's no telling what he wants to do in your life. There's no telling because whatever happened after that, you know the story. If not, if you don't, then read the book of Daniel. All of his friends got risen up to levels of ministers in the government. Daniel had the opportunity, but what did he do? He went, he decided to stay in the gate. And what did God call us over here? We're gatekeepers, each one of us, right? We're gatekeepers. God has called us to be gatekeepers. And so this morning, I really want you to just believe God, whatever it is. I know some of us, we're seeing you guys. We haven't seen you since Christmas and New Year's because of the circumstances and the illnesses and sicknesses that have been taking place. But well, we're so glad that you're here this morning. But as you are here this morning, celebrating, can you celebrate the life that God has given you? More importantly, the favor of God that is on you. There are so much of blessings that you can thank God for. And just put aside all of your worries, all of your concerns, and just listen. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Amen. The favor of God says, Now God granted Daniel favor. And what? And compassion in the sight of the officials. 
what are you struggling with? What official is holding back something from you? What promotion is being held back? What sickness is holding you back this morning? Nothing can when the favor of God is upon you. Nothing can. Amen? Amen? Do you believe that church this morning? Come on, let's sing this song again and just be, make it a prayer to, you, to the Lord this morning. It's a reality. Come on. It's a reality in our lives. It is not what we see out there. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith is of things, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so when you, as Miriam talked about it earlier, that whatever the circumstance may be out there, the storm may out, be out there. But he says, I am the Prince of Peace. Yes. And he can speak to the storm and calm it. He says, with your finances, I am your Jehovah Pro. Jireh, he's your provider. There is no lack in his kingdom. Amen. So what is it that you're looking for? He is your healer, Jehovah Rapha. He is your banner over you, the love of God over you. Today is the day. Today is the day that you receive from him his favor and blessing. Amen. Would you do that this morning? Would you just prayerfully as we sing this song again, just prayerfully commit it to the Lord and just say, God, who I'm believing, I know that today is my day of receiving your favor and blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. There's an outpouring of abundance. New doors have been opened. Relax. It is green. morning the blessing the blessing of the Lord is here this morning then the drama the blessing is here it's all here there's another flow it's a new ever a new level. There's an overflow. Abundance of blessings. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you.
favor upon us this morning we Lord because without you there's nothing we can do and it's only because of your grace and your favor oh God that is upon us Lord we thank you for the healings and the deliverances of God that we have experienced here in this body of believers we thank you for financial restorations oh God we thank you oh God for for touching and restoring lives Lord, and marriages that are restored. God, we thank you. We thank you for the blessings. God, you know that we, we know that you have much more for us. And so we want to continue to walk in that blessing. We want to continue to be in the overflow, of God, of your rivers of living water flowing in and through us and through this place and into lives, oh God, that is outside these four walls that will be impacted by your word and your gospel of salvation and redemption and restoration and healing. God, we thank you. I'm reminded this morning, oh Lord, for the wor words that you spoke to us, to forget the former things. Do you not see I'm doing a new thing? And Lord, even now, oh God, whatever it is that you do, it's a new thing. Every day is a new thing for us. And so we thank you, oh God, that you are creating roads in the deserts and rivers and dry wastelands. And truly, God, we have seen that in the past five years. We thank you for your blessing. God, we pray this morning, those that couldn't be with us this morning, whether they be sick or it's due to work schedules or whatever it is, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, with the power of your Holy Spirit, would you minister to them, oh God, would they, as we speak your word of healing and send it out, that they will be touched and be healed, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, there are several, oh God, that is out, Lord, sick this morning, and so we declare by your stripes, they are healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. We speak. No cancer, no COVID, no diabetes in the name of Jesus Christ. We cancel. We cancel the work of the enemy this morning. And we receive complete healing and restoration. Even the symptoms of God in the name of Jesus Christ. We cancel symptoms of God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for arthritis, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You are delivering right now in the name of Jesus Christ, being set free from aches and pains in the joints, Lord, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Lord, every person that needs healing and restoration in their bodies, we thank you for that in the name of Jesus Christ. We receive it by faith tonight, this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your for your provisions, financial provisions. We thank you, O oh Lord, for our families. Lord, those that are lost without you. There are many, O oh God, and many of us that have family members, Lord, that may be on the fence or may be outside the fence or they, they haven't really taken time to hear your voice or to come to you and to surrender everything that they have to you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, that we will continue to press and we'll continue to believe, O oh God, because your word says, you and your household shall be saved. And so we call forth, O oh God, salvations in the name of Jesus Christ. 
we call forth in the name of Jesus Christ because your word says you came to heal the brokenhearted to set the captives free and so we declare that in the name of Jesus Christ right now we thank you Lord for your work hallelujah we praise your name we praise your name oh God glory to your God glory glory to your name oh hallelujah I worship you this morning we honor you God, we honor you and just worship and bow down before you this morning. Lord, because we are just humbled before you. Lord, we are just here. Lord, at your feet, your word says, oh God, that you are seated in the heavens. The heavens is your throne and the, Lord, the earth is your footstool and we are seated right now, God, in your presence at your footstool, worshiping you, God. And we thank you. We thank you for your love and your favor and your grace that you bestowed upon us. Bless every part, O oh God, of this service as we continue on. Fulfill that which you want to do in our midst this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, wow. Good morning, Living Way family. Good morning. Well, I should actually be saying happy anniversary. Yes? Five years. Five years. Those who have stuck it out with us for five years. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. We know that, you know, the Lord brought you here to partner with us. And we are so blessed. Oh, Daniel, Angie, so good to see you guys. Praise God. Thank you. And those of you that we missed for a while, Jenny, it's so good to see you. And Ashley, good to see you. Amen. Well, we are celebrating five years over here at Living Way. God is so good. Amen. Got a couple of things we want to take care of this morning. And we were just, we've been planning this. We've been praying. We've been seeking the Lord. So I'm beside myself right now. All right, to see what God has done at this place. Moment, moment. I want you to hear from a young couple. It's very dear to my heart. This family is really, really dear to my heart. And I saw the Sanchez family. I really love them a lot. And I've grown to walk through with them the various areas in their lives. Um, ups and downs, praying with them for different things. So I want, to, want you to welcome Johnny and Colleen at this moment. Coming up, guys. <laughs> Diane, the mom, is our council woman. She's on our church council. Johnny is the oldest son. And Colleen is his beautiful wife. Amen. Come on up here, guys. Amen. <laughs> this is so cool. So I asked him yesterday. He called me and I said, Johnny, I asked your mom, but your mom was like, I'm so nervous. I don't want to share anything. You know, but I just thought this would be perfect for them as a couple to just share something, you know, uh, what the Lord has been meant to them and how things are, because they were here before we came. And so they've been with us, and they stuck it out. And um, it's a Dolphins fan, so <laughs> go figure, yeah. Anyway, here we are. Okay. Johnny. Good morning, Living Way. <laughs> it's great to see everybody here celebrating this special day. I've been looking forward for this, eh, well, like maybe a couple of months, we knew it was coming up. It's just a beautiful day, beautiful day just to celebrate overall what's all taking place in the congregation. Just to be a part of this, it's, it's very peaceful for us, me and my wife. Um, we've been coming here for like 25 years plus. Uh, when it was Pastor Charles Edwards that they had it before a pastor took over. And when he first took on over, my mom told me about Pastor Conrad and Cheryl. And I was kind of like... I don't know how to take me time to get to feel comfortable with him because I was with this one pastor for so long and trying to convert and change over was kind of, but 
when I finally met him, it was like when those doors opened, I, I felt embraced and loved and just the word that here I am a Christian and moving forward, you know, he has made me become a, a stronger believer as, as following with the Lord. And that right there, I'm grateful. And thank you, Pastor and Cheryl, for making me a stronger believer. And uh, there's much more I'm going to say, but I'm going to let my wife say something for now. Good morning. Um, so actually watching the videos, you know, like my husband said, we've been coming here for 25 plus years. Um, there's a handful of our family that's been coming, our friends, um, Peggy, Lily, Rose, Sally Ann, Diane, Elena, Mari, my sister. Um, we've, my brother-in-laws, you know, we've been through weddings, dedications, baptisms. Um, our children were raised in this church. My son used to play the drum set um, when he was younger. Um, I used to take children up to Big Bear um, with the youth, um, the little kids. I had an SUV, and I always volunteered every summer um, when the church was, um, you know, there was no busing. We volunteered our time and um, just many things. Just, yeah, I may not come every Sunday. Uh, you might see me sitting in the back kind of quiet to myself, but every time I walk through these doors, I just feel the the love of God. Um, if I had a bad day, a bad week, you know, I, I leave it at the door. And, um, you know, the just just being here, you know, 25 years later, I, I don't want to go to another church. This is this church has been our foundation, our home. Um, it's, um, Pastor, the last five years, you know, I thank you and Cheryl for not having this church go away. You guys kept it. You've grounded it. You've grounded all of us here. Um, you guys have always been there for when we've just called you out of the blue. Maybe I didn't talk to you for a few weeks or a month. Um, and you guys have always just been there for us. Um, and I just thank you. And, you know, I think, uh, just, I just thank the Lord all the time for keeping us grounded and, and our foundation and continue just, you know, to build my faith. And just thank you. Amen. Amen. You know. It, it's been a real blessing, you know. There's been a lot of things that have gone, taking place, right? right. Uh, losing dad, mm -hmm. you know, getting at, at that time a difficult season. Yeah. Your sister had cancer, and God, oh my goodness, this story. She came and testified over here. We began to pray. We began to declare. She's in Arizona, Tucson? Um, no, Idaho. 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 She's in Idaho, and we're praying and believing God, and then all of a sudden she shows up here, and she's like cancer-free, delivered. God touched and healed and restored, you know. So you just have to believe in faith, right? And this young man here one day called me during COVID time, and he said, Pastor, I need to pray. I need you to pray for me. I got a procedure for my eyes. And so... I said, oh, my goodness, Johnny, I did not know that. So can I come? He says, no, Pastor, you can't because I have to, the COVID protocols and, you know, just done the test since he had to wait 72 hours, quarantine and all. So, so we prayed. But I tell you what, there's something that came about, man. I just said, Johnny, you're going to see again. You're going to see again, right? And it was, was it the last procedure that they were thinking of? It was the second one. It was the it was second one. Yeah. And so, but... God touched and healed his eyes, you know, and, and praise God, he was struggling, and I did not know of it for a while, you know, with his eyes, but God touched and healed, and several like that, you know, your family, Brianna and Johnny, and of course, your brother-in-laws and all of them, God is doing a work here, so we thank you for sharing that. Uh, God bless you guys. Thank you. Amen. Love to. Lord is good. Amen. He, all the time. He is good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. So 25 years, I didn't even know that. I just learned something new today. <laughs> right? But 
but really strong family. I love them. So, and then last year, in 2021, 2020, actually, 2020, it towards the end of 2020 and early 21, Miriam and Al were all coming up. This is another couple that is just added to. Oh, I can see you. You, you, you really said we're here to serve, Pastor, and we're just going to add to it. <laughs> so, and the so, more the, the more the merrier. Miriam and Alvaro, you guys remember seeing that picture, right? Uh, the first pictures where um, the street and the church, and then there was a UPS truck out there. So anyway, Al drives a UPS truck, but not that one. He works for UPS. But I used to have a UPS store. And it's like the Lord was saying for, to us when he had asked us to sell our store out. I had no idea what he was planning it. But he said, and when we took a Google shot map, we're sitting in our district supervisor's office at Dennis Easter, and we see the map shot. And I was like, no way, there's a UPS truck right outside on a Google shot. And the Lord is saying, I was just trying to get you out of UPS into this church. That was the time. I'm serious. That was the day. We didn't even know that. You know, and he said, you know the church where it is, right? And, and things like that. I said, yeah, I know it. I've been there and stuff. And he pulled it up and he says, well, this is the church. And it's like right there, the UPS truck parked outside. So anyway, Alvaro works for UPS and she's a housemaker, takes care of two with soon to be three kids. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us on this special day. And um, honestly, we, we just want you to feel God's presence. We want you to get in touch with Jesus. We really, our desire, everything that we do or, or put our hands to, it's really just for you to experience Jesus. Because Yes, he saves us all. But to some of us, he's our friend. To some of us, he's our only friend. Reliable, trustworthy, huh? We have to tell him our things sometimes. To some of them, he, he's a father. A father. To some of us, he's, he's um, the one that keeps us straight and keeps correcting us, you know, when, when, we need to, when we need that too. And we just, as... as as a family, when everything that we've done, and, and I think every single one of, of, of the people that are, are part of my family, extended family group, <laughs> you'll see them. <laughs> if you haven't already, Howie, my, uh, my mother-in-law. And Jasmine's really close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we, we want you guys, we want you against Jesus and God's presence. That's it. That's it. Um, but yes, we got here because COVID happened, and a lot of uh, m things happened. You know, ministries got shook in. Um, you know, the, the attack against the church is real because it just stopped happening where we were. Prior to that, me and my wife, we had this genuine desire. The Lord began to put a a, a um, interest in having a home church for my children. Because I have little ones, you know, I have, I have, well, she was like three or four years old when we got here, and the little one was barely walking, and I'm like, God, I can't, I, I just, I can't see myself serving you how, how I, I feel like I need to, if I need to go out and run after my children in the street, like, I need, I need a, I need a physical building, church type. Not like a, like at a separate campus type thing. And I, lo I love that place. Thank God for that place. I really love that place. But um, we needed something f different for my children. That's just what it came to. We needed that. And things happened and the circumstances weren't ideal. But I said, Lord, you work everything together for my good, for my family, for my kids, man. Like, no, no matter what, we're just going to serve. And we're not going to look at what's going on around us. We're just going to serve you. And we're going to delight ourselves in you. And you will give us the desires of our heart. That's what we're going to do. Like, it's as simple as that sounds. But that's what we did. 
So we came in here and I said, Lord, you know what? Like, I want to teach some people, like, some music. You know, there has to be musicians here. There has to be worship for you, man. What's going on? Like, let's get this going, you know? And so quickly I'm like, oh, you want to play? I remember Angie, you want to play guitar? Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's get, let's get, let's get, let's get the guitar going. Let, the bass, uh, drums, whoever, man. Let's, as long as you, want, you put your hands to the, to the plow and you say yes for Jesus, not for anyone else. Let's do it. Let's do it. And, and so my wife also, she, she was playing bass, and then she, the Lord blessed us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so that's just, that's just what has happened. We have delighted in serving the Lord despite all these different things that have been going on around us, and the Lord has given us the desires of our heart. Amen. This home church where we serve, we're very glad to be here. And... Um, God knew why this one was for us. And we're so glad to be here. We're so glad to serve. And please, all you come every Sunday, please. Yes. You know? <laughs> we all need it. We all need it. Not, 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 not. We, we all need it. Okay? Well, he said everything I was going to say. But it's honestly, it's, I have not been here for 25 years. You... You are on a roll. <laughs> We've been here for a little, a little, little over a year now, but it does feel like we've known each other for a long time, and it's been an honor and a blessing and a privilege to be able to serve alongside with Pastor Conrad and Pastor Cheryl. And you know, <clears throat> one of the things that I really wanted was to feel like a family. Um, you know, I've grown up and I grew up in church. You know, I, I started going to church since I was about eight years old. And um, we would go to church every Sunday and then we moved church and then we'd go to another church. And, you know, it was, it was a thing. And I never felt connected, real connected to an actual pastor or to a church. And my desire was always to feel, I want to feel like a family, you know, where I, where I know that I can call a pastor or I can talk to and not feel like, oh, you know, well, you're the pastor or you're the leader. And, yeah, I, you know, that like there's a barrier usually because, well, someone else isn't, you know, you're the pastor. And thank God I'm so blessed to be able to be here because I have truly felt this place to be a home and a family you know, and I've been able to just feel embraced and loved, not only by our pastors, but by all of you that have just embraced my children, embraced my family. And to me, you know, as a mom, if you have children, that's the most important thing. You want your kids to feel welcome, to feel loved. And my kids have so many grandmas now. They have, you know, they have Grandma Lily, they have Grandma um, Sandra, Grandma Amalia, they have every grandma in here, you know, and their grandma, Grandma Juanita, which I'm missing today. But um, they have so many grandmas, and they're just happy to, to know that they were coming to church. They're like, oh, is Grandma Juanita going to be there? Is Grandma Lily going to be there? And, and it's just a joy for me to see them get happy coming to church. And, um, you know, like my husband said, please come every Sunday. It's so nice to see you guys. Um, but honestly, thank you so much, Pastor Conrad. I'm um, seeing the video. It just really, I really see how you just trust the Lord and have believed the Lord. And because you've done that, we're here. Every one of us is here. Whatever circumstance has brought us here, we're here because someone decided to believe and trust the Lord and just, despite anything, say, all right, Lord, I'm going to do it. You know, so thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you, guys. A huge blessing. And you know what? They came with, uh, she came with her sister and her mom and, and thank God for and her brother, Howie, who helps us. We were praying and asking the Lord. Pastor Cheryl used to sit up there and do the, the 
slides and all that stuff, and now we have a dedicated person for that. We have a dedicated person for the board, for the sound. Just a huge blessing right now. Amen. And then Jasmine, two weeks ago, stepped in to sing, you know. <laughs> Praise God. So, yeah, a lot of things. New levels, new heights. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I really don't want to take away too much. Well, lunch is not going to be here till 1230. So, so we have time. All right. So uh, one more quick thing I want to do this morning um, uh, is it's important for us because as pastors, we, we have walked through different types of leaders being here, some for the season that they needed to be here, some whatever reason, uh, was here with other agendas and have gone on and things like that. And so there's a lot of things that have happened. But for this last couple of years, we've been really praying and asking the Lord, you know, to, to bring somebody alongside us so that for pastoral ministry. And so we've been praying, but so, you know, just this past year, we just sensed and felt while we prayed and fasted and talking about the vision that God has placed on our hearts for this year, uh, we felt that this is the time and this is the season. So we wanted to do it today. So would you guys just join me and welcome. Uh, by the way, our church, we're we have four square. And so, right, we have, uh, you know, we believe in men, women in ministry. And it's something that four square trumps a lot. So I was just kidding with somebody this morning. I don't know if it's Bob. Is that all of our church council are all women. All women, and I tell you what, they're all strong, powerful, spiritual women. And they just help me and keep me on track, right? But one of them, we, we really feel that the Lord is leading, the, leading us to, to another level for her. And so, Sandra Escobar, would you come up? Sandra is, she's our council member, but she's just amazing. You know, the Bible says, and I just want to read this to you, but I don't want to miss any words because I was intentionally wanting some of these things. You know, a servant leader, Jesus talked about being a servant leader, right? Choosing a leader, meet the needs of the organization, meet which the leader operates in, meets the needs of people to whom the leader interacts with, have some form of authority over people and leading, you know, accept and, and discharge the responsibilities and positions. Those are qualities of leaders, right? And so we will look for that. But Jesus talks about it in Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 to 28. He talks about leadership. He says, but Jesus called them together and said, you know, that there are rulers in this world, Lord over their people. Their officials, they flaunt their authority. Go over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must f first be your servant. And whoever wants to be the first among you must become your slave. And so, verse 28, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life a ransom for many. So there's leadership. And I tell you what, if there's anybody in this church, one person, there's, and there's several of you, so don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but one person is like Sandra. She's just so faithful. Uh, you know, it's a Christian phrase that, that we tend to use a lot of times, and we talk about it, describe a person uh, that Jesus talks about in Matthew as a servant leader. And truly, she has displayed that servant leadership qualities. And so we want to say to her this morning, and we have been praying, and so Pastor Shara and myself are welcoming Sandra Escobar as part of our assisting in pastoral ministry. And so we want to just honor that, and we want to pray for her. We want to speak into her life and just say, God, uh, she has faithfully served uh, in, in the hospitality place coming early Sunday mornings so that you guys can have coffee, tea, and all the snacks, and stays late, wipes down all the tables, makes sure the kitchen is clean, and she would leave, you know? And so we just felt like right now, Sandra, is the next level. We want you to 
to minister and one of it being. And she is, at times, when we have been praying, uh, she comes out, God gives her words, and she speaks it. She's bold. And so, new levels. Amen? New levels. I want to welcome Cindy and Asha up over here, please. Would you just come, both of you, and as ministers, and they are licensed, and they are ministers of the gospel. Um, and so we want to pray for, for them, for Sandra, as we anoint her and just receive her. Would you just receive her as part of pastoral ministry, uh, assisting ministry over here? And um, what I ask you to do is stretch your right hand towards her as we pray for her, because the right hand symbolizes a blessing. And what you're doing is you're saying, yes, we bless and we receive Sandra this morning. Amen. And so, um, Asha. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh God, I just come before you, oh God, with a grateful heart. Grateful heart for what you are doing right now, right here. For your anointing upon Sandra, Lord, I thank you. For Lord, you have led her thus far. And given her, Lord, a servant's heart. And Lord, I thank you that she has done so much in your kingdom and you are well pleased with Sandra. Your daughter, O oh God, has wiped tables. Your daughter, O oh Lord, has done everything with a servant's heart as unto you. And I thank you that this morning, oh God, you are raising her up to a new level. A new level with a new mantle upon her shoulders where, oh God, Sandra is going to go forth. Prophesying your word, speaking the truth, dividing your word, oh God, and bringing forth your word with clarity and with dignity. You are a woman of dignity, Sandra. You are a woman of integrity, Sandra. And you are a woman who's going to walk forth in the power, the anointing, and the humility that only comes from the Lord, only comes from Jesus Christ, your Lord, your Master, and he looks to you this morning and he says, daughter, go forth. Go forth, daughter. I am taking you to places you have never been before. I am taking you into his word, into my word, into that truth where, Sandra, so many things will come alive to you and you are going to prophesy. You are going to be Deborah. My name for you is Deborah. And you're going to walk forth, dividing the truth, spreading the truth, in and under his anointing, he is going to pour into you truth. And that truth will set his people free. Amen. That truth will set his people free. No doubt, he's called you, and he will equip you to be who he has created you to be for such a time as this. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, Father, for this new appointment for Sandra. And Lord, we just call her forth into the boldness of your Holy Spirit to speak your word in truth, in gentleness, but with the boldness and the confidence that comes from knowing you. Father, we thank you that she has walked forth with a servant's heart. But Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would anoint her this day for purpose. Anoint her this day, Father, to speak forth your word, Lord, and to break the bonds 
of chains that, that would hold people back. Father, that she would release many, even as you are releasing her today, that she would release many into your purpose, your calling, and your destiny for their lives. In Jesus' name. God, it's such an honor, Lord, that we just get to partner with you, Father God, in, in this kingdom of God. And Lord, this morning, Father, the gifting, the calling, the anointing, and the pointing all comes from you, Lord. We are just standing here, Lord, as, as uh, ambassadors of Jesus Christ and just releasing Sandra into what you have already predestined for her. So, God, I pray, Lord, that as we release Sandra into this position, Lord, that will be a position, Father God, that will bring glory to your name. And, Father, that we, Father God, will be edified as a body together here in this positioning. So, God, I pray, Father God, that you would give us also, Lord, that each one of us, God, who are witnessing this, this beautiful, beautiful moment, Lord, give each one of us, Father God, the the, the right, Father God, to be able to enjoy this beautiful moment. But above all, that we would come alongside Sandra to be armor bearers to her too, God, as she goes forth into this ministry. So, God, we thank you, Father God, for all you've done for us in the last five years. And, Lord, you know, it just reminds me for a moment that in the natural, when we talk about kingdom, uh, when we talk about business, the first three years is a lot of hard work where you're putting into the business, and then later on, you get to see the prophets coming through. And so, Lord, even in kingdom business, Lord, we just witnessed the hard work that was put in. But, God, we're now seeing the prophet coming through. So, God, we thank you, Lord, for the prophets that we're going to be seeing, Lord, the, the prophet, Lord, that will bring, Father God, more and more, Father, that need to be brought into the fold. And that, Lord, is all that we're called to do, to go forth and speak your word. So, Lord, we thank you for this moment in time and for this divine appointing moment in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. We love you, Sandra. Amen. Well, Pastor, you know, we'll just put it back into the kingdom. Amen. Well, Pastor Sudarshan, please come on up. And Ali is coming up. Every one of you all received a bulletin. Would you just take this home and read it? Because there is actually a prophetic blessing that God spoke over this congregation, over this church, and it is for this season that we have. So take it, read it, and uh, pray over it. All right? Amen? Well, you're about to hear a word from the Lord this morning, and just allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and minister. Sorry we took up a bit of time. God bless you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I should be on. I'm good? All right. Many times I've turned it off when I was supposed to turn it on and all that good stuff. Well, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord with all of you once again. Happy anniversary. Five years. Man, you guys have done a lot. And renovations, remodeling. It's a bottomless pit. <laughs> My wife and I thought we were going to do this quick $5,000 job in our basement in the bathroom because it needed to be fixed. It turned into a full-scale remodel, and $20,000 later, we finally finished. I'm like, what happened? Well, this needs to be fixed. And then you open that, and you find something else needs to get fixed, and you open that, and but it's all done, and now we get to enjoy. You put in the work, and now it's time to enjoy the fruit that comes. Amen. I, um, before I go any further, just um, I kept getting this word, and uh, every time I look at you, I, just the phrase, zeal for my house. And Conrad, I think that describes you. There's a humility, a tenderness, but also you persevere. No matter what gets thrown at you, you and Cheryl, and I congratulate both of you, and God is gonna honor that zeal for this house. 
you know, you guys walked into a situation and it's been tough, but you've hung in there. And um, God's going to honor that. He's going to bless this congregation. He's going to bless this place. He's going to bless this house. Um, you know, I was telling Conrad, I was, uh, he said, hey, you have really nice handwriting. And he goes, it's actually Cheryl's. <laughs> God's made you a team so you can make each other look good. And that's what's going to happen here. Both of you are going to shine. And now as you build your team around you, and that's just going to add to the fullness, the brightness that's going to emanate from this place that will draw people here. So congratulations and God bless you. Brother Alvaro, did I say that correctly? Yes. yes. Can you stand for a second? I have a word for you. I was listening to you play the drums. Before I ever saw your face, I was just sitting there with my eyes closed and I heard you play. And you play with restraint. It's like, if you could, you would just go all out. But you kind of pull back a little bit because you don't want to be too loud. You don't want to overwhelm. There's that restraint, okay? But yes, I'm going to show you my age now. For those of you my age, you might remember this Muppet called Animal that used to play the drums, <laughs> right? He gave it all he had. It's like the best character on the show, him and the Swedish cook. But, but that's in you. It's like there's all this stuff that's bubbling, and you want to let it out, but then you kind of like, should I? Should I not? Should I hold back? And God's put certain things in you that he wants to bring out. So the time of holding back and the time of restraint is over. It's time to let it flow. And God's going to bless you when you do that. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm sure you've never heard animal being referenced in a word like that, did you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's good to see the Gowers again. So it was Nashville, I think, right? We met? Yeah, Nashville, okay. I was trying to think if it was Nashville or Seattle, but it was Nashville. And um, it's good to see you guys and pray the Lord is blessing you and using you mightily. You went to Nigeria during COVID time. God bless you. And uh, it's tough. I, um, anniversaries, birthdays, we all mark time. We mark time in our lives. We mark it in the things that we do. We mark it. Everything is, you know, and then, you know, like we're celebrating our 31st anniversary. And, you know, when you first fall in love and you first get married, everything gets marked. And guys, we always get in trouble because we can't remember to save our lives. You know, you know what today is? No, it was the first day I saw you. Oh, really? Okay. You know? Uh, you know? The funny part, though, when you're together long enough, you flip. Like in the beginning, my wife would remember all the things. Now she forgets and I remember. Amen. And I go, hey. 31 years ago today, I met you for the first time. She goes, really? That was today? Oh, okay. <laughs> but we mark time in so many different ways. You know, we have school reunions. Some, I think, are from hell, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, because it's like you go and you meet people and you're going, time was really good to you, me, not so good. I look like Santa Claus in training, you know? It's just. <laughs> but we mark time. It's good to mark time. God marks time when he speaks. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He marks time. When he talks to Job, he says, were you there when I created the world? Where were you? I've been around for a long time. Time's important. And nowadays, everybody seems to be talking about time because we live in a crazy time. Things are crazy. And it's not just crazy in the world, it's crazy in the church. 
Because guess what? We all live in the world and we come into the church and we bring the crazy with us. Okay? Of course, none of you, you're all holy, sanctified, purified, <laughs> just like the water we drink. It's the other people down the street. <laughs> but we live in a time and we don't know which way is up anymore. First wave came and we thought, okay, we're good. And here comes the second wave. Right? And all these things that happen, you know, first it was the regular kind, then Delta, and now Omicron. The funny part is I was supposed to go to South Africa in December. Two days before I go, the whole Omicron thing says, comes up and they say, you can't travel. And well, actually, that's not true. They said I could travel, but there was no guarantee I'd be able to come home. Nice. And, he, and he goes, you know, because we wouldn't want you to get stuck over here. I'm like, what? He goes, no, that didn't come out right. You know what I mean. <laughs> so I stayed home so I wouldn't get Omicron, and I got it anyways. <laughs> so it happens, and we live in this season, and we're going, Lord, we fully don't get it. So then we try to get facts from different places, and we're listening to this news source and that news source. We're listening to this live stream of this church and the live stream of that church and this preacher and that preacher and this prophet and that prophet. And we're trying to take all the stuff that people are giving to us, and then we're trying to decipher the time. A few years ago, my, my father and myself, my daughter, we had the opportunity, there were 65 evangelical leaders that were invited to the Vatican to meet with the Pope when they were celebrating the 50 years of the charismatic Catholic renewal. And dad and I were invited, and my daughter went with us. And so we were there in the Vatican Palace, and we're waiting to meet, and he came in, and he's walking down. And I have my daughter right next to me, and I'm like, okay, I want you to stand this way so I can get you with the cell phone. And she just looked at me. She goes, Dad, enjoy the moment. I hate it when your kids teach you things. <laughs> she said, enjoy the moment. And... You know, what happened, we met, and then afterwards I was talking, I said, what did you actually mean by this? She goes, you were so busy trying to document, I know you were proud that I got to meet the Pope and all this stuff, she goes, but if you were so busy documenting it, you wouldn't have enjoyed it. We are so busy trying to figure out the time that we're missing out what God is doing in this time. We're missing out on it. God is doing something. In the midst of what we don't understand, God is doing something. And he wants to do greater. But if we're too busy trying to get the facts and figures, we miss out on the experience. Book of Ecclesiastes, in chapter 3, talks about there's a time for everything time for everything. And it's amazing because it's God who's made the time. There's a time for everything. I'm not going to read all the scriptures, but verse 3, I mean chapter 3, verse 1 going down, it says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to reap. Time to gain, a time to lose, verse 6. Verse 7, the second part, it says, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. There is a time for everything. Isaiah 21, verse 11. Reminds me, my father used to preach this sermon is saying that they're calling out to those that are on the wall. Verse 11 of chapter 21, it says, The burden against Duma, he calls out to me out of Seir, Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said, The morning comes and also the night. 
if you'll inquire, inquire, return, come back. Watchmen, what of the night? The question I want to ask you today is, what time is it? What time is it? Not simply of just looking at my watch and saying, okay, it's a half hour to lunch. <laughs> or so. But what time is it? What time are we living in? There's something more. When I would say to you, what time is it? You're either going to tell me it's 12 something, or you're going to say, well, it's winter or it's something. You're trying to put it in a framework. We need to know what time it is. And then when we look at what's happening in the world, reminds me of 2 Timothy chapter 3. It says we live in perilous times. It's crazy. But this is what I also want to say. And forgive me if I offend anybody by what I'm about to say. I'll get over it so you can too. Uh, 2 Timothy 3. In this time of uncertainty and all these things that seem to be happening in the world, the easiest thing is for us to jump on the bandwagon and try to predict that Jesus is coming back today, tomorrow, or day after. It's the easiest thing for us to do. Because if we say that, then we think we're just getting out of here and we're going to escape all this. But I simply want to say this, with all due respect to all those who think they figured it out, Jesus said this. He said, no one knows the hour except the Father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And my simple logic is this. If the Father's not telling the Son, he's not going to tell me or anybody else. Right? Right? So I have to figure out what it is we're supposed to do, and that's we're supposed to be ready. But it also means that we come to an understanding of today. We've talked about Daniel a little bit earlier. Pastor Conrad was talking. And the people of Israel, they were in exile. But you know what? The word of the Lord came to the people who were in exile. And it didn't simply just say, wait for the time you're going to come out of exile. Don't do anything till then. He said to put down roots, to build houses, to give your children in marriage. Have, do all those things that you would normally do. Why? Because God always wants to keep raising up his people. Always. In every situation, in every time, whether it's a good time, a bad time, or a horrible time, God is continually pouring out on his people Amen. and will raise them up. So what do we know about this time? First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. It says, the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the time to know what Israel ought to do. See that? To know what Israel ought to do. They had an understanding of the times. And please understand what I'm about to say here. We need to understand the time and the season. It's not about amassing so much knowledge, facts, and figures that we try to figure out and we have all these possibilities and we're trying to figure out which one is going to happen and God simply says just follow me just follow me it's almost like you have a child and you're saying do this do this and the kid says why 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 and finally just said because I said so stop trying to overcomplicate things but learn to understand so that you can experience and enjoy that moment. God wants to do something, but the coolest thing about it is he wants us to enjoy it when he's doing it. 
We're so busy trying to figure it out. How does this fit in here and how does that fit in there? And I know this is going to sound contrary to what a lot of people are trying to say out there. But God hasn't changed. He hasn't changed. Right? It's right there. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Understanding the times. The sons of Issachar, it wasn't simply saying, yep, this is point A, point B, point C. No, they knew how to act in that moment. They knew what Israel ought to do. Because if you don't, if you simply amass knowledge and you don't have understanding, you panic. You panic. Turn on the news today, and you hear all these different facts and figures, it scares the living daylights out of me. Right? Where we live in Rhode Island, this is a beautiful coastline. I can take a five, not, barely a five minute walk, and I can see water, it's beautiful. And then I always looked at these houses that were right on the water, and I'm like, one of these days, Lord. I'll be very happy, thank you. And then I'm watching the news the other day, and they have this map, and these houses, which I thought I'd be nice for me to have one of them, they're all going to be underwater. And I thought, well, maybe I don't want that house. <laughs> it's scary when you start to think what could happen. But I have to remember my life, my future, is not in the hands of those facts and figures of what could be. My life is in the hands of who is. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's where I rest. That's where I find comfort. That's where I find strength. When I understand, rather than simply know. Proverbs 4, verse 7. It says, Wisdom is the principle, but in all you're getting, get understanding. It's good to have wisdom, because that comes from knowledge. You say, okay, this is what I have. But now wisdom added to the knowledge, now if I get understanding, it brings forth benefit. I have a friend of mine, one of the smartest people I know, incredibly smart. I mean, he's the guy when, you know, anything breaks down, I call him up. He tells me what to do. But I've seen him make decision after decision that has only brought destruction because there's no understanding. To have the knowledge, but not knowing when to use it, when not to use it, when to walk in it, when not to walk in it, it can bring destruction. Get understanding. I pray. I read the word. I had an experience once. I went, they do they have pet boys around here in California? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just checking. It's been a while since I lived here, so I don't remember. Um, I went to pet boys to buy tires. And I was sitting there as they were putting tires on, and there was this couple, and they were sitting there, and they were having this conversation. But the conversation, my daughter was with me, and at that time she was three, two or three. Yeah, I think she had just turned three. And this couple was going on, and let's just say they were using very colorful language. <laughs> Enough so that it bothered me that I was about to say something to them, basically tell them to shut up or get out. And all of a sudden, just as I'm about to say something, not in a very nice way, the guy looks at me, he goes, I know you. And I went, uh-oh. I go, you do? He goes, yeah. 
He goes, you preach on TV. I go, yeah, that's me. <laughs> and I'm like, Phew, glad I didn't say anything yet. <laughs> but then he tells me, I'm a believer. I said, oh, really? That's great. Tells me what church he goes to. Nice. Then he says, I want to test you to see if you're really a man of God. I said, okay. Go ahead. And he goes, the book of 2 Corinthians, is it really the second book of Corinthians? I kid you not. And I looked at him and I said, well, actually... Scholars say that it's probably 3 Corinthians because there seems to be something missing, so we think there was a 2 Corinthians that's missing. This is 3 Corinthians. And he looked at me and he goes, yeah, you're right. And all I could think of is this guy had all this knowledge, but there was no demonstration of a Christian lifestyle. Had the knowledge, difference does it make if you know whether it's 1st, 2nd, 3rd, or 125th? It's nice to know, but if I don't see the fruit of it and I don't see the benefit of it, it's a waste of time. In all you're getting, get understanding. In all you're getting, Get understanding because you're here. You put in the five years of work. You've done all these sort of things and you say, okay, Lord, I'm following you and I'm doing the work as I go. I'm doing the work as I go and I'm following you. And you say, keep going. I keep going. And you, I need to do this and I take care of that. Yes. Because you understand it's not about marking off milestones, but it's understanding what God is doing in this place. And all the things that were put up there, that was great. But what I heard when you were speaking up here had nothing to do with the building. People who were coming into the house of God, people who were getting saved, people who were getting healed, people who were getting delivered. Because the building part and all that were the milestones and the facts, but what God was doing was the understanding understand the seasons, understanding the time. And time is, is crazy. But this is what I'd like to show you for just a couple more minutes. Psalm 102, verse 13. If you turn with me to that. It says, You will arise and have mercy on Zion, for the time to favor her, yes, the set time has come. The time to favor her, the set time has come. The first thing I want to say about time is there is a set time for everything. There's a set time. Esther, chapter 4, verse 13 Esther's uncle comes to her and is talking to her about what she needs to do. And she, he says, basically, you have come for such a time as this. You've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. I want to speak to all of you that are here. You are living here and you are part of this church for such a time as this. Amen. Yes, 25 years ago was great, but the next 25 years will be greater. Yes, what's happened and all those things are wonderful, but yet God wants to do something that will transform. There's a set time. If you follow with me, you'll see. Don't worry, I'll get to where I need to go. The Bible teaches that it was ordained before the foundation of the world that Jesus would come to earth. And die for our sins. It was set then. Before the foundation of the world. When everything was still void. Lacked form. Purpose. Or anything else. It was set. That Jesus would come down. 
But notice this. It didn't happen as soon as it was set. But it was set. God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And there was something that was set for you. And it will unfold as time comes. The mistake we make sometimes is that we try to pinpoint these things. And we say, well, it was set. That means it happens. I love prophecy. I love when people get up and they hear from the Spirit of the Lord and they say, thus saith the Lord, and they say it to me. But I had to learn something. Because you know what I used to think? As soon as I get a word, I get all excited. Because I'm like, this is it. God said it. It's going to happen in the next 10 minutes. I go, God, why isn't that happening? You just said it. Yeah. But your life hasn't aligned with my word yet. Oh. I got to do that part too? Yeah. The set time comes. But now the adjusting, the aligning, the adhering to the submission, the surrender, all those things have to take place. Listen, you might be here and you're saying, I've had so many words over me and they haven't come true yet. It's not about, Lord, maybe you're not going to make that happen. No, the Lord will make it happen. But you have to say, Lord, what do I need to do to get my life in alignment with that word? A set time. The second thing about time is there's a permitted time. It's a set time. And there's a permitted time. In John, the second chapter, there's a description and the retelling of the story of the first miracle that Jesus did. He goes to a wedding in Cana, and they run out of wine. Now, in the culture and in that time, that was a big deal. All right? And, you know, some things haven't changed. What do people remember from a wedding? They remember what dress the bride was wearing. And if they liked it, they'll talk about how great it was. And if they didn't, they'll criticize it until Jesus comes back. <laughs> and the other thing, what do they talk about? The food. Yes. Right? If, you tell me, if I said, well, what about this last wedding you went to? You go, oh, the food. <laughs> and different cultures, it, it's a little different. Indian culture, you have to feed everybody and their grandmother. 31 years ago, we had 3,300 people at our wedding. She's asking me, who's this? I have no idea. Thank you for coming. <laughs> You're coming by? Thank you for coming. And it's worse in India because the bride and groom eat last. Everybody eats first, and you eat last with your family. And then they want you to eat from the same plate. And you're like, no. <laughs> you know, I'm a little bit of a germaphobe, so you know. <laughs> but, you know. But the food is important. Well, back then, it was the same thing. I, my friends and I, we went to a wedding in Costa Mesa. And we remember we went to this wedding and everything else. And we go for the reception. We're hungry. We're like, you know, it's a wedding. We've been here all day. Let's go. And they had these little finger foods. <laughs> and, and forgive me, but, you know, my friends were of the Mexican lineage. And my <laughs> friend looked at me, and he goes, these white weddings. <laughs> <laughs> So we went to McDonald's. <laughs> anyway, they ran out of wine. I was told lunch isn't here yet, so I can keep going. <laughs> oh my God. Jesus' mother Mary comes up to him and says, 
ran out of wine. And what does he say? I love this. If I ever said this to my mother, you could do it back then, not now. Right? What does this have to do with me? That's what he says. My hour has not come. Wow. What does, this have, what does this have to do with me? It's not. My hour has not come. There was something about it. Jesus knew, because it was set before the foundation of time, foundation of the world, he was here now on earth. He's at this wedding. His mother now comes and said, this is the problem. And he goes, yeah, but this is not my hour. But then watch what happens. He does it anyways. Does it anyways. It's the only place in the Bible that makes me think that Mary has some influence over Jesus. You'll get it later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right? But he does it anyways. And I said, why would Jesus do that? And then I just felt the Lord impress on my heart. How many things I let you do, even though it's not in my perfect will? He allows us to do certain things. Because there's some things, they're not bad. They're not great. Okay. And he says, okay, I'll leave it to you. It's permitted. There was a time that was set for Jesus to come. So till then, we had the prophets, we had the judges, we had kings, we had sacrifices and all this. What was that for? It was allowed. Till the perfect came. It was allowed. There's a permitted time. And then, there's the fullness of time. Galatians 4, verse 4, it talks about in the fullness of time that Jesus came. In the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. In the fullness of time. But think about this. In the fullness of time, Jesus came and he was born. But that didn't end everything right there. It started it. It started it. And I started to think about this. And I said, Lord, if the birth was the start, it wasn't the end because there was still more to do, but why was that the fullness of time? He goes, because at that point, it means everything was brought together to start in motion. Think about it this way. In the fullness of time, when a child is born, everything that child is to be physically, mentally, emotionally is already in that child. It starts then. But they don't come out of the womb talking and dancing and walking and running and doing everything else. Right? My sister's going, uh huh. Because <laughs> it's true. The same way Jesus was born, but it started to set into motion and everything was there. It was gathered together in the fullness of time. It's ready to happen. So we have a set time. We have a permitted time. We have a fullness of time. John 12th chapter, verse 27. Jesus is speaking. And he says this. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose. Everybody say, for this purpose. For this purpose. I came to this hour. There is a purpose for the time. It's set. Things are allowed to take place. The fullness sets it in motion. Now comes the real purpose. What was Jesus saying when he said, my hour hadn't come? He goes, listen, I'm here. I'm doing all these wonderful things everywhere I go. People are going to get healed. They're going to get transformed. They're getting delivered. All those things are wonderful, but it's not the real reason why I'm here. There's something else that is yet to take place. And as he gets close now, he says, I came for this hour. 
And it's only on the cross where he says, it is finished. The hour came and the work was done. We can lose sight of everything God wants to do in our lives if we get caught up in all the things that happen. Oh no, this is happening. This is happening. The news says this. This person says that. And we start to get into this frame of mind and we're saying, God! And he's saying, stop. Understand where I've placed you. Understand that I have put you for a time such as this. And I'm raising you up from this time forward for the tomorrow and the day after. I remember when I first was sent out the first church plant. I was so excited. I just come off of being on TV. I, you know, was traveling as an evangelist. And I'm thinking, well, when I go and I have these open air meetings, all these thousands of people come. So when I start church, they're all going to show up. My wife showed up. <laughs> had a couple of Bible school students that helped us out, set up and take down, and they were there. And the people that let us use their home, that's who I preached to. Yeah, but Lord, I, I, I'm the evangelist. I go out there and all these people come, and here I am starting a church. Go knock on the doors. What? Go knock on the doors. Can't I just put a poster up and say, everybody come? No, go knock on the doors. Every day I used to finish at the office at 6 o'clock. i get in the car. It would take me 40 minutes to get to where we were planning the church. That was my nap time. And then we would go knocking on doors till 10 o'clock at night. And I said, Lord, I don't get this. I don't get it. The Lord was quiet. And I didn't realize till afterwards that I only got the understanding once I went through it. I saw what he was doing. I saw how everything fit into it. I saw how we moved from meeting on a terrace of a house to later getting our own building. And today it's being extended again for the fourth time. And the growth that took place happened under my associate more than after I left. Why, God? I had to understand my time was there for that time in the beginning. To do the work and get things ready, and then God would start to do going forward. Understanding the time. Listen to me, please. I feel this so strong in my heart. There are things that God has spoken over this house. But as those things unfold, you're going to hit things, you're going to hit obstacles, you're going to hit opposition, you're going to hit all these things that take place. And the thing about it is, is that when you measure against what God promised, you're going to start to get discouraged and you're going to grow weary. But the word of the Lord to you is understand the season he's placed you in. The, the, the best way I can say it in the simplest of terms is go with the flow. And you will see the goodness of God unfold in this place. Because if you're always looking at that final thing to happen you're going to miss on everything God's doing now. And it's all there and it's going to come together to fulfill the final thing. Understand the 
time. Don't sit, you know, I, I had an experience. I was at a conference in New Jersey years ago, and a man of God came up to me, and he gave me a word. And I took it, I wrote it down, and I went back to my room, and I opened up my laptop, punched in the verse, and all these things came up, and I'm reading them. But then as I started to read, it could be taken two ways. One was a great promise and encouragement, and the other one was like a beat down, you know? It's like, hmm, why'd you do that for? I was like, oh Lord, what did I do? And so I'm reading, I stayed up the whole night trying to read this, read that, trying to figure it out. You know, is the Lord encouraging me and saying I did good or is he correcting me and I'm in for it. The next day I saw that man of God again and I said, hey, I went back and I studied all night and, and I, I looked at these verses and he looked at it and he goes, you did all that? I go, yeah. He goes, what did you feel when I first gave it to you? I said, the Lord was encouraging me. He goes, that's what you should have gone with. I stayed up because I was trying to get more. I wanted the facts. I wanted to know what context that word was given and what was the culture of the time and every, all these other things. And all it did was take me away from God simply wanting to encourage me and almost took me to the place where I thought he was condemning me. We need the understanding. Understand the time that God has placed you in. But I leave you with this. Daniel chapter 9. The angel comes. Gabriel comes to Daniel and he's speaking to him. Verse 22 says, and he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. A skill to understand. Understanding, the ability to understand is not automatic. It's not automatic. It's a skill. And it's a skill given to us by God. And how do we get it? If we go back into the beginning part of previous verses in chapter 9, what is Daniel calling the people do? To repent, to come and pray with fasting. How do I gain the skill to understand? When I fall to my knees... I get before God, and I said, Lord, give me the skill to understand. I repent for where I've tried to impose my own will. I repent where I've tried to take the knowledge that I've gleaned from all these different places and try to superimpose it over your will. Repent where I've fallen short. Repent where I've placed myself above, and I humble myself before you. Fasting, it says, he says he called people to fast, uh, pray with fasting, supplication, sackcloth, and ashes. Doesn't mean you have to go get sackcloth and try to find it somewhere or rip the clothes you have, which I wouldn't advise because ripped clothes now cost more than regular clothes. <laughs> right? I have two young daughters and I don't get it. <laughs> But, or to go around and get ashes and put it on and say, look, woe is me. But what it means is that we would humble ourselves before God in total surrender and say, Lord, help me to understand your will. I understand you knew me before 
I was formed in my mother's womb. I understand that as I'm growing, you've allowed different things to happen and you've allowed me to come forth this far. You've allowed these things to happen. I understand that you've already put in me all the talents and giftings and possibilities and potential. You already put that within me. But now I've got to come to the place where I realize the purpose. Help me to have the understanding. Help me to have the understanding. Yesterday, we're driving to the airport and we used a car service and the, the man that was driving, smart, he's an inventor. And even just talking, you could hear all the things. I mean, he knew stuff. But he kept saying, you know, because I'm an amazing guy. <laughs> and I'm going, I've only known you a few minutes, and I really wish I had a different driver. <laughs> you know? And, but everything every few minutes, because I'm an amazing guy. I'm this great guy, and I'm sitting there going, Lord, what? And I just thought, and there were all these things that didn't happen in his life, and he was frustrated, and all these other things that were happening. And I just thought, what would happen if he turned that around and surrendered his heart to the Lord? Then he would actually have an understanding for his life and a purpose for his life and why he has all these amazing talents and giftings. Because obviously he did. But when you don't have an understanding of what it's for, and the time you live in, and the time you are, that God has placed you in this world, it's for nothing. It starts with us coming before him. Lord, I surrender myself, I surrender my life, I surrender my dreams, my ambitions, everything else. I surrender to you. And now I pray, give me the skill to understand your purpose for my life. Starts individually, and then corporately as your family, and then as a church family. Give us the skill to understand the purpose for us here, that we may fulfill it, in every way, at the right time, for the right result. Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, I pray for my brothers and sisters here today at Living Way. I thank you, Lord, as they celebrate and mark this fifth anniversary. We thank you for all the things that you have done and are doing right now and are going to do in the future. Thank you that you have gathered your people that you have brought for this time for this purpose. You brought them together. You are uniting them in the bonds of love in Christ. I thank you, Lord, for Pastor Conrad and Cheryl and the team that's with them. Thank you, Lord, the way you've guided, ordained each and every step that they've taken. You've been with them And the reestablishing, the reworking, the renewing these past five years of this place. But now, Lord, that you have brought things together, we thank you that the purpose is to be realized in the days ahead. But, Lord, I pray for. Pastor Conrad and Cheryl, and each and every one of this church, that more so than facts and figures, they would have an understanding of what the Spirit of the Lord is doing at this time, in this place, 
for your purpose. Moving at the speed of the Holy Ghost is not just to be in a speeding mode, but to actually know where you're going and to accomplish the purpose you set out to do. And Lord, I pray that you would bless them, enable them, your grace to be more than sufficient for them in each and every time and circumstance. Carry them forward, Lord, that your amazing work and purpose would be realized in this place. You would be seen, you would be heard, you would be felt. And because of you, lives would be changed, transformed. Not just the lives of those who enter into this building, but the lives that are surrounding this building. Father, we thank you once again, and we continue to bless your name. And Lord, because of that, I bless those that you brought together in your name in this place. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.